Well, they're doing what they need to do. I don't ask the guys here to play the by your hearts, for me. <laughs> Precious Father, we just come to you. Yes, Lord. God. And before I even talk about the meeting, yes, God. Father, I want to bring my brother Floyd before you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, I pray, I just pray, Father, that you would just touch him. Yes, that you would bring him peace and comfort, Lord yes, God. God. Yes. That you would allow him to know, Father. Yes. That while we're here in this church, yes, that yes. we're all thinking and praying of him, Lord yes, God. Yes, Lord. Because he's special to each one of us. Yes, he is he has family here, Lord God, that was born by the same, you know, he was that your mother was the same. Yes, but Lord God, we share the blood of yes, Christ God. together, yes. and that's very important. Yes, so Father, we ask a special touch for him tonight. Yes, God. And God, I just pray also, Father, that you just touch my heart and my Come mouth, on. Lord God, yes, that God. you would anoint my lips yes. and I would say exactly yes. what you want yes. me to say, yes. and that would be the only thing that would come, yes. Lord God, yes. is what would come from you. Yes, God. And I just ask it all in the precious name of Jesus. Yes. Amen and amen. 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 You know, I was, uh, okay, most everybody knows today is my birthday. But see, if I had been born, if I had been born, but for the purpose of God for keeping me here, there's nobody to ever think about me again. And I want you to think on this because, see, God has a purpose for each one of yes, us. He does. Yes. And He has something for each one of us to do and, and a way to function yes. through and by Him. Yes. Yep. But see, when we're done, He can flip the switch, you know, and and the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die yeah, yep. and after yeah. death the judgment. Yeah. Yes, sir. See, the thing of it is, we're born, we have a purpose, we serve our purpose, yeah. and then we go on. Yep. But see, there was a case yes. Yes, so where there was a man that was born as a babe, and he came into this world, and he had more purpose than anyone could ever understand. Yeah. Satan knew it. He, taught, he, he had the king try to try to take out all babies yes. because he thought that he would destroy him yes. and take away the purpose that he had came for. But see, God had another plan. God had another plan because when this all happened, he just kind of slipped through the crowd. Yeah. See, the problem is today, there's a lot of us that are slipping through the crowd, Amen. and we still yet have a purpose to do. Yeah. We still yet have something to do. We need to go on and do what God said for us to do. The problem that arises is you get into a church house, and you've got a bunch of well-meaning Christians that are trying to tell you exactly what to do and how to do it. And the problem is, is God says, no, you do it my way. Amen. Yes. Right. And if you don't do it God's way, then you may as well stay somewhere else. Amen. You may as well go down on the corner or whatever and think you get tired and sing for a crowd. Yes. Because it's not doing you a bit of good Amen. if you don't do what God says. Amen. Amen. Yep. Be obedient. Yes. We're each born with a purpose. Yes, we and it's like I said, back in 1957 when Shall I was we? born, no big thing. You know, I was a fifth kid to my mom and dad, and I'm sure that they thought... You know, I mean, I don't know if I was truly planned or if I was one of them surprises. <laughs> but the thing of the matter is that I came. Yeah. Amen. And see, when I came, I came with a purpose from God. Yeah. Because God had a purpose. Yes, he does. I went through school, and in school, you know, I was, I was told that I was basically I was a failure, that I had never amount to nothing. That's what they tell you. Oh, and you know, when you look at all of that, and people, people look at that, and people put you down, and people try to grind you under their feet into a sidewalk, but see, they can't do that if God has a purpose for you. If you're truly looking for what God wants you to do, then you have to move forward. Yeah, and see, the thing of it is, it's like a message I preached some time Amen. back. said not to look and not to continue looking into the rear view mirror right. because it's a lot. you see a lot more in front of you. Yeah. See, that's what God wants us to quit. Yeah. God wants us to quit looking backward looking because forward. there's nothing back there. Amen. There ain't no bar. Come there on. ain't no dance hall. Yeah. To make a difference in your life. Yeah. You have to move forward for God. And Come on. You move forward for God. Preach it. And you're lost. Preach it. Preach it. Amen. 
Now I do have scripture, so just hang on with me a little bit because God's going someplace with what I'm saying. God. Preach it. So see, like I said, you know, back in October 1957, here comes this little kid, you know, this baby. You know, I become, you know, when as, as I grew older, you know, I, I was a chunky little kid. I can remember one of the few childhood memories that I can remember is I can remember my older brother saying around Thanksgiving time, I said, why don't you stick him in the oven? He's nice and fat. <laughs> you know, there's some dumb things like that that you remember when you were a kid. Oh, yeah. But see, they put Jesus down. Yeah. Yeah. They, put, they put him down because they called him a drunkard, yeah. Yeah. a glutton. Yeah. They said he hung out with sinners. Yeah. 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 What's your problem? Man, think about it. Anything that Jesus done, we're supposed to be able to do. Amen. And he said the things that he done, greater things shall he do. You know, that we're going to do greater things. You know, I, I'm standing here in front of you, and I'm going to tell you what. There's a part of me that's shaking so bad that you wouldn't even recognize it if you could see it. And it's not in fear of the people that's here, because I love everybody that's in here. But what the fear is, is that I let my mouth I'll let Mike Daniels get in the way of what God wants to say. And Come what God on. Wants to do. Well, Preach it. And see, the thing of it is, if I allow myself to get in the way, yep. then I am no use to God. That's it. Because it says, it says in John, the third chapter, in the 14th verse, and it says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of God be lifted up. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what, if you're any type of Christian, if you're any type of a preacher, yeah. then any time that you get the opportunity, you're going to lift God's name up. You're going to lift yeah. the Son of Man up. Yeah. And the thing of it is, if you're not lifting up Jesus, then sit down. Sit down. There you go. Because Amen. it's not worth me getting up here yep. and wasting your time and wasting my time Amen. and definitely wasting God's time if I'm not going to tell you what God wants. Come on, that's good. That's we good. We have to understand that Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Yeah, we're ready to get there. And soon, before long, it's going to be the Christmas season. Everybody's going to be putting up their little snowmen and their little holiday scenes. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're going to draw people to this and to that and the other thing. The stores has already got their decorations yeah. and all their, their advertising their gifts yeah. and you know look out on turkey day because on turkey day they're going to have the black friday start on yeah. thursday oh, to yeah, interfere yeah, with your family yeah. time and i'm going to tell you what is it better to go save fifty dollars on a television set than it is to spend fifty dollars worth of time at home with your family about that. when they need you more than you need to tell them yeah set. because a television set even though there's good things that can come across that screen yeah. the television set is another way for satan to pull you come on and your there you go to take away from the purpose that you have yep. that god has for you yeah. because i've been in churches i was in a church that's trying to help this pastor out and i and, and I couldn't understand it. It come time for that big Super Bowl, you know. Oh, yeah. And we was we was all there. And we had service Sunday morning. He said, he said, uh, he said, I know that there's some of y'all want to have church Sunday night. But he said, I'm the pastor, and there's going to be no church because I'm going to sit at home and watch Super Bowl. Uh, okay. <laughs> you know, what he done, was totally wrong against what God wants us yes. to do. Amen. Yes. Because I don't care what kind of programs on television. That's right. When it comes time for church, or when it comes time that I need to get ready for church, I need Amen. to shut that. I don't have to say get up and go shut it off because you ain't had to do that since I was a kid. They got little remote controls now. You hit the button and blip, there ain't nothing there. So you get up and you go ahead and you get ready and you go to church. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you what, the one time that you sit at home to watch some stupid ball game or some stupid program, then God may have something for you or one of your children. He may give you a word that you can give to somebody else and you might call somebody their soul. And yes, I said you might call somebody their soul. Because if you're not doing what God wants you to do, yeah. Then there are people that's depending on you. Amen. And if you're not doing what God wants you to do, they don't get it. Don't they don't get what God wants them to have. That's right. That's right. And that's like standing here. You know, I could have stayed at home. Today's my birthday. Yeah. 
I could have said, well, you know, there's some things come up. Well, there was something come up the other day. I had another nephew pass away. He had, uh, four years ago, he had a kidney transplant. It was my niece's husband. And he, he contracted COVID, but he had been taking medication, rejection medication, so his body was run down, so he was susceptible to COVID. So they took him into the hospital for something. He got COVID, and now he's gone. He left behind three kids and a wife. You know, the, the kids are all adults, but still yet, it doesn't make any difference. Right. Anytime you lose someone, right. I don't care, it hurts. Yeah. There is a pain that doesn't go away. And I, I read something, I don't even remember where I read it at, just, but it said that the pain that you feel when somebody goes is because it's a love with nowhere to show. Amen. And, 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 and you know, that's the truth. If somebody that you love passes yeah. and you can't love that person, then you've got a ball full of love that you can't do anything Amen. with. Amen. But, but, you can go to God. Yeah. Yeah. And God can reuse that love yeah. Yeah. and the love that you felt in your heart yeah. Yeah. for that person and He can allow you to share it with a lot of people. Right. Right. Yeah. Which means that you can reach out to a lot of people yeah. and draw them to Christ. Amen. You know, it says, if I be lifted up. That's what the Son of Man said, if I be lifted up. Yeah. And see, that's what we have to do. We have Amen. to lift Jesus up. Yes, we do. Because if we don't lift Jesus up, What's our purpose? You know, if I didn't have Jesus, there isn't no need for me being here. Right. And, if, and, if, and, and Lord, I, and I'll say this out loud, and, and I'm saying this to God as much as to anybody in here. Yeah. If it comes time, Lord, that I ever might mess up and not make heaven my home. If, you're, if, if I'm done, if I'm through, then, then just take me on. Yeah. Amen. Because I don't want to miss heaven, Amen. but in more than not wanting to miss heaven, I want to take every soul amen. that I can take. Yes, with me. amen. Because it's about the people's souls. Yes, it is. It's yeah. not about the people. You can love their heart and their souls yeah. that yeah. God has given them yeah. without loving what they do. Yeah. I have relation. Yeah. Yes. I don't like what they do, amen. but I still yet love them. Amen. Amen. And it's important that we reach out to those out. Yes, that sir. we care about. Yes. You don't have to reach out, man. That's right. You don't have to. You don't have to take that Bible. You know, you, if I was to take this big old King James Bible and I start whooping on them, it ain't gonna do them any good. It's just gonna Amen. make them hate what I stand for. Right. And I stand for God. Amen. I could have instead of coming down here tonight. My daughter, which I don't get to see very much anymore because she moved away. She asked me, she said, are you going to be home this afternoon? I said, honey, I said, I got married and I got church tonight. I said, you know that, I got church. She said, well, we're just going to come over. And I said, I'm sorry, we'll have to set something up later. Because this is where God wants me. Amen. That's right. And God, God sent me here as well as I'm standing here. God sent yes. me here. Yes, amen. And he placed me on that front yes. row. Amen. And he had a reason yes. for me to be here. Yes. yes, amen. And since I've been here, I've been able to help pastor. When he was when he was hurt and he wasn't able to do things, Pastor Tony out of town and things. So I've been here. Amen. God has allowed me, and I say allowed me because it's his ministry to open up the visitation oh, ministry Lord. where I can go out and talk to people that's in need. Amen. 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 And see, it's not about me. No. It's about more of Jesus yeah. and less of me. That's it. You know, John John the Baptist said, you know. I must decrease Come that on. Yeah. increase. That's good. John the Baptist knew yes. that his yes. ministry, yes. as soon as Jesus stepped in the water yes. for John to baptize him, John knew that his ministry yes. and what the purpose that God had for him yes. was basically over. Come on, that's good. Because Jesus had come to replace Amen. and to go higher yes. than what John could go. Yes. John couldn't do anything more than what John had done. Amen. And it's not that John was giving anybody an easy message. Right. He definitely didn't get a sugar-coated message out of John the Baptist. No. <laughs> he told you that hell was hot, and if you didn't get Amen. right, that's where he was going. Amen. Right. And see, that's what I want people to understand about me. Yeah. I get up here, and a lot of times, when I'm standing up here, there is a message, you know, with, with more compassion, more because 
That's what God is doing. That's not what I've done. Because I'm going to tell you the truth. I know what it is to be just, just like the song we sang. God reached way below the bottom and raised, you know, he reached his hand out to me and raised me up. I know where I came from. Amen. And I know what's out there. Amen. But see, also understand that there is two sides to every coin. Yes, Just like that there is true meaning for every scripture that is in the Bible. Amen. In as much as it says over in 1 John that God is love. God is love. Even though God is love, you make a choice. Right. If you choose to serve mammon, which is to, to be a part of the world, to, yeah. to live in the world and to act like the world, yeah. then that's on your head. That's right. Right. And you're going to, you're going to be judged for it. That's right. Yeah. Because for every choice, there is a consequence. Yeah. That's right. Yep. And every time that you move forward, if God says go to the left and you go to the right, you're not going to get what He wants you to do. You're not going to receive the blessing that He wants to give you if you're not in His will. And He goes so crazy in life because you can look out there and you see people that God has given so much. Yeah. Amen. And they just throw it away. They do. Amen. You know, God has allowed people to have a beautiful baby. Yeah. And they throw them away like they're trash. Yeah. 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 God has given people money upon money, yeah. allowed them to make money, yeah. and, and they throw it away Hello. on bass boats and yeah. fast cars and fast swimming. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And then they're throwing it away when there's people, when there's people that if they took that money, that they could, that they could, they could literally, if they took the money that they spend on bass boats and swimming yeah. pools and stuff, yeah. if they began a program, they could feed country, a country, a complete country. Yes. But they won't do it. That's right. And you know, when I talk about countries, I'm not just talking about Africa or India or someplace right. like that. I'm talking about the United States of America because we got children right here in America that is going hungry and people ain't doing nothing about it. People going and going down to the casino and they'll blow $1,500, $2,000 at the casino and their next door neighbors are starving to death. Freezing to death in wintertime because they ain't got no heat because they can't pay the bill. But Jesus, but Jesus had the answer. Yes. You know, he came. He was the answer. He yes. is the answer. Yes. He is yes. the beginning of the end. Yes. 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 And if we don't look to Jesus for what Jesus wants from us, then we're wrong. That's right. That's right. You know, they had that show, that, the Happy Days, is, uh, years yeah. ago, and, yeah. and they had the Fonz on there, and he, he'd go, he, he couldn't even say, he'd say, I did, rah, 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 rah. you know, there's nothing, if you're wrong, yeah. you're wrong. You're wrong. Yeah. Because we know who is right. Amen. And today, he's at the right hand of the yes. Father, interceding yes. for us, yes. and interceding when we yes. blow it, when we make a mistake, he's there, he's there yes. speaking to God on our behalf. Yes. But you know, let me let me go back and read some scripture here. But it said, you know, again in the 14th verse, and it says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Yes. And verse 15, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. All right. Amen. There's nothing hard about that. That's right. It's belief. Jesus was the Son of God. Yeah. He went to the cross and died. Yes, he did. He was raised. Yes. And he ascended into heaven. He <laughs> said at the right hand of the Father. Amen. To become our lawyer, yes. if you will. Yes. Because a lot of people understand lawyer. When you start saying that you intercede for us, you know. Let's say a lawyer. He's arguing our case yes. in court. And God's the judge. Yes, he is. Yes. So, but Jesus is sitting there. And, he, you know, a lot of people might understand the court idea. Because they don't understand what it is to have a friend right. speak for them. That's because right. most people don't have that kind of friend. That's true. Right. 
And I just, you know, it kind of breaks me down inside. Because there's so many people out there that need a friend. And we're in church, and we talk about how we love God. Do you really love God? Yeah. Come on. Are you doing what God said? Preach Are you reaching it. out to those that need? Preach it. Preach it. We have to. It really does, you know. And I, uh, I look around and, and I've seen people that's been in need before. And you know, I do what I can when I can. Amen. But there's, there's things that you could do that I can't do. If someone doesn't know how to read, there's people out there that's gifted enough that they could sit down with somebody yeah. and teach them how to read. Yeah. There's somebody out there that cooks well enough that has enough skill that they could teach a young girl yeah. how to cook yeah. and prepare food so that they don't go hungry. Amen. Amen. There's people out and about that could teach somebody how to work on an automobile yeah. so that they could get from point A to point yeah. B. But see, we have to lift Jesus up. Lift him up. Oh, you know, he was he was lifted up on that cross for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And had it not been for Jesus, yeah, we would none be here. Right. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, if God give us what we was deserving of, yeah. we'd all be in hell yeah. right now. Yeah. Because we deserve nothing. Yeah. He deserves everything. Yeah. He deserves all of our praise. Yeah. He deserves all of our worship. Yes. Because we can't we, when we wake up in the morning, that's a free gift from God. People talk, well, God don't never give me nothing. He gives you life. <laughs> when you wake up in the morning, the first gift He gives you is the ability to open your eyes, Amen. the ability to take a breath of air, yeah. the ability to walk into your kitchen yes. and get you a drink of water Amen. or to go to the bathroom. You know, God's gift. Amen. You can't. You can't write all of God's gifts down on a piece of paper right, or a notebook or a building full of notebooks. That's right. Because you don't even know when God caused somebody to run out of the gas uh -huh. 10 miles up the road that maybe he was going to run over you when you got That's out of right. your vehicle That's out here to come into the church house. That's right. Amen. That's true. We never know what we're going through until we get through to the other end. That's right. You know, there used to be, uh, used to laugh at people, but they used to be an old time saying, they said, you know, I could see a light at the end of the tunnel. I hope it's not a train. Well, I'll tell you what, if you're looking at the end of the tunnel and you're seeing a light, it could very well be heaven. Yeah. It could very well be the cross if you've got your life right with God. But if you don't have your life right with God, then that light you might be seeing, it might be hellfire. And I'm going to tell you what, there's no quenching that fire. There is no putting it out. I don't care how many fire trucks you get that's got running water. Come on. You can take all the lake. Yeah. You can take the ocean and you yes. can pump it all into hell yes. and it is not going to quench that fire. That's right. Amen. And I don't care if you've got 10 ton of ice, that ice is going to do you a bit of good because that fire is unquenchable. Unquenchable. That fire is there to stay. And if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, you better learn because we're very, 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 we're right here. You might even be able to put your life the amount of life that you have left on the head of a pen. Yeah. Yes. You don't know when Jesus is coming back. Right. I don't know when Jesus right. is coming back. No. Only God knows. Only God. That's right. But one of these days, he'll split the eastern yes. sky. Yes, he will. And when he, put, he, when he splits the eastern sky, it's too late to say, Lord, forgive me. Amen. Then if there's any hope for you whatsoever, you'll lose your head. You might have to watch each member of your family Think about that. be dismembered in front of you in some fashion. Yeah, I know that that's kind of gross sounding. You know, we're not talking the walking dead or none of that junk here. What we're talking is reality. The reality of it is, is if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, today could be your day. Because today could be the day of salvation for you. But you have to call on Jesus. I can't do it for you. No. And come judgment day, your mama, your daddy, your lawyers ain't going to be able to stand in front and argue your case. Amen. That's right. When it's over, it's over. But in John 3.16, 
It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever. 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 You want to be a whosoever? No. Nope. If you're a whosoever, that means that you know that you've called on God, that you've got the opportunity. Yes. But if you don't call on God, you don't allow Him to do what He can do. That's right. That, that's like being thirsty and, and a, a brand new case of water sitting in the refrigerator, ice cold, you being thirsty. If you don't say, hey, can I have some water? Yeah. You'll never get it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But Jesus is offering you eternal life. Eternal life, life. <laughs> yeah. He's offering your family eternal life. Yeah. If you'll live the if you live the lifestyle of Jesus Christ in front of your family, yeah. your family might look at you and say, Well, man, he was a heathen. What happened? Yeah, man. You know, he used to do this and that and the other thing, but what happened? Yeah. Well, see, I've had some family look at me like that and say, Man, you ain't you ain't saying she was. Amen. No, I'm not, because I met a man who hit named Jesus. Amen. And when he came in, he came in and he gave me he gave me the thing that I needed. He gave me a transfusion. He allowed his blood to flow through my veins. He touched me with that special touch of heaven. He gave me an opportunity that I could see heaven, that I can make heaven my home. And now he's given me a bigger opportunity and a bigger job. I got to stand in front of people and stand in front of a, a, a screen, somebody, whatever you want to call them things, a phone with a camera on them. And I'm telling you people, but see, I'm not standing here for my help. No, no, no. I'm standing here because like Jesus, Maybe I love you. And I don't love you. No, they ain't no, I ain't talking about no sensual type love. I'm talking about agape love yeah. that comes yeah. from God, what God yeah. shares with the people. Yeah. Because I can love you. I love your soul. Yeah. I may not care for the things that you do, but I love your soul. Yeah. And I can pray for you. Yeah. And if you, hey, look me up on Facebook. And, and if you want me to pray for you, Amen. give me a shout. Yeah. I'll pray for you. I don't care if it's 1 o'clock in the morning, Amen. if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. It right. doesn't make any difference. Right. Because it didn't make Jesus any different. It didn't make God any difference right. when he chose to allow his son to come to an old rugged right. cross. And as he come to the old rugged cross, he could have called 10,000 angels yes. to have changed the whole circumstance. Yes. Right. And as he yelled at a rock, and prayed in the garden. Yep. They got a special name for it, but his drops was his drops of blood. Yes. Yes. But the thing of it is, is he said, if there's any way, Father, let this pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. You see, if God's will is done, if God's will is accomplished, then you can see a change in those around you. That's right. You can see a change in your life. You can go from yeah. wanting to drink of alcohol to, to being satisfied with a glass of water. Yeah. You can you can there's so much that God can change in your yeah. life. He can take you if you're a drunk or if you're an alcoholic yeah. or, or you know, when I say a drunk and an alcoholic, there is two different kinds there. An alcoholic yeah. has to have the alcohol. Yeah. A drunk is somebody that chooses to just go drink. Amen. Amen. But if you're a drug user, God can come in and he can, he can change the whole makeup yeah. of your yeah. life. He can take every want, every desire, yeah. the filthiness yeah. that you desire in the drugs and yeah. things, and he can take them all away. Yeah. Yeah. You'll no longer have to look at somebody and say, well, I'm an alcoholic. Yeah. I'm a drug addict. No, you don't want to have to say that. Because when God gets done, he don't do anything halfway. He does it, he does it all the way. Because that's like these people that says, Well, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Well, no, I gotta I gotta contradict you. Amen. I'm sorry. Amen. If you're a sinner, you're a sinner. Amen. If you're a saint, you're a saint. You can't be both. God said that good fruit can't come from a good tree. And bad fruit can't come from a good tree. So you know, I mean you can't have both. You might be working on your sanctification every day because 
I ain't any different than you. I can right. slip and make a mistake. I do. might say something that may not be correct. We all do, yeah. But I have to call on God and Amen. say, Father, forgive me, forgive me yeah. for what I've done. Yeah, and right. I ask it in the name of Jesus. And then it goes to God, and God generally forgives it because Jesus is fighting hard on our Amen. side. Amen. He's our See, we have to learn that we can't give our life away because our life isn't ours. Right. We're not our own brother. I belong to Jesus. Amen. And Jesus is the one, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, walks with me. He leads and guides me. He takes me to people that may need a word. He gives me the ability to stand up here and talk. Because I'm telling you what, at times I don't want to be standing behind no pulpit. Amen. At times, Satan will bring back on me what I was when I was in the world. But see, I ain't that man no more. Amen. I'm not that person anymore. Amen. You've had you a new birth. You don't have to be the person that you are. You don't That's like right. it. You don't like it. You've been looking for a change. You're yeah. saying, man, there's got to be something different. I'm so tired of living like this. I'm so tired of living in hell. I walk through yeah. my door to house or whatever, and it's hell from the time that I walk in until the time I go to bed. That's right. And when I get up, it starts all over again. Yep. If you want to change, call on Jesus. Yep. Amen. 